the explosion physics in Saints Row are incredible. In 2006, Saints Row released as an Xbox 360 exclusive. It was developer Volition's first venture into the urban sandbox genre, following the success of the monumental Grand Theft Auto. Around this time, Saints Row and many other games had created a brand new gaming genre, the GTA clone. I don't think calling Saints Row a GTA clone is fair, because yes, there are similarities between both games, but there is also so much more that's different. Volition has used next-gen hardware to pad out the open world, include more side content, and make everything less linear than ever before. There are so many new mechanics in Saints Row that surpass GTA, and even what we have in modern games. This is the first video in the Saints Row Still Great series, but I'll be looking at all the Saints Row games to see how they hold up today. And finally, I'll finish with the reboot once the dust has settled following its launch. We'll see if Saints Row 2 is still the best in the series, and if Volition did in fact go too far with Saints Row 3 and 4. But first, let's look at the original Saints Row to see how it holds up 16 years later. Let's find out if Saints Row is still great. Yo, speed this shit up. I wanna go to Freckle Bitches. Ready for this player? When Volition were designing Saints Row, they wanted to evolve the GTA formula. They didn't want to restrict players in certain areas, or force us to complete missions in a set order. Their idea was to give us the game and let us decide how we play it. The biggest way they achieve this is by opening up the entire map after the introduction. Once we've joined the 3rd Street Saints and learnt the basic controls, we can play any mission chain and any activity in any order. I couldn't believe this at first, because I remember when Breath of the Wild came out in 2017, and we all rightly praised it for this very reason. We talked about how Nintendo threw away the open world formula to create something special. Well, Saints Row did this in 2006. What's great about Saints Row is that Volition designed the side content to take center stage in the open world. They didn't want the side content to be throwaway activities, so they linked it with the main missions. Basically, we have to run side content to earn respect, which then fills our respect meter. Then, once we have a full bar on the meter, we cash in the respect to play the next mission. Like we're putting a coin in an arcade machine. This was the right move, because the side content in Saints Row is the best part of the game. The first thing to say is that the side content is all different. We have activities that go from defending a drug dealer as he sells his products, to driving around an entertainer while she entertains someone, to rescuing sex workers from their abusive pimps, and really anything in between. The best activities though are those that utilise the incredible physics in the game. Mayhem uses the explosion physics, as we blow up cars sending them flying into the sky, whereas insurance fraud uses the ragdoll physics as we hurl ourselves in front of oncoming traffic. I mean look at the explosions. Cars don't just blow up with a predetermined effect, it's different every time as individual car parts are propelled across the map. And although these activities sound simple, they actually have a lot of depth. They each have bonuses and multipliers we can trigger to increase our score, like throwing ourselves in front of a police car for 4 times damage, or using a certain weapon in mayhem. Along with the physics, these little additions keep the activities interesting from start to finish. It's probably a good time to bring this up, but before Saints Row, Volition created the early Red Faction games, which also had incredible destruction physics. The first mission in Red Faction, for example, was set in a Martian mine, where we could tunnel through any part of the map. Now, I never played the first Red Faction, but if like me you're playing through Red Faction Guerrilla again on Switch, you'll get an idea of what it's like. The destruction in Saints Row isn't quite on the same level as the Red Faction games. We can't topple huge buildings or smash through walls, but it is still better than most games. Saints Row is also a masterclass in how to reward us in-game, because every time we beat an activity, we unlock something new. We might unlock a perk that makes us more resistant to bullet damage, or we'll unlock a variant of a supercar, or even a powerful weapon that we pick up for free back at our crib. 
The absolute highlight here was the reward for beating the snatch activity, a pimp cane shotgun with 16 shots in the chamber. Whoever thought of this idea at Volition, well done. Okay, so what I'm about to say might sound alarming. There are bandit camps in Saints Row, and the bandit camps are the best content in the entire game. Here we have strongholds, where we go to an area, clear out enemies, and take over the strongholds with the Third Street Saints. It sounds pretty similar to modern bandit camps, doesn't it? Except it isn't. The strongholds are fundamentally the same, but due to the way they're implemented, they are completely different. In one stronghold, for example, we might be on a roof with a sniper, shooting down at our enemies below. While in the next stronghold, we have an RPG firing rockets at enemy cars. Whereas in another, it's different again, as we have to plant bombs inside a factory before platforming onto the roof to plant the final bomb. This is how bandit camps should be in modern games. Modern bandit camps are a chore to play, because all we do is clear out enemies in different environments. It's the same objective every time. It's funny actually, because when Volition were designing Saints Row, at one point they wanted to give us absolute player freedom. This meant that there were no main missions or narrative in the game. Thankfully, they decided to include both, which was absolutely the right choice. The narrative is extremely basic compared to modern games. We play as a newcomer to the Third Street Saints and have to take over the city of Stillwater. This involves wiping out the heads of three rival gangs, the Vice Kings, the Carnales, and the West Side Rollers. It's clear the Vice Kings were supposed to be the main narrative. It's by far the longest mission chain, has the most depth, and also includes the best characters, like Johnny Gat. Johnny is undoubtedly the best character in the game, he's extremely charismatic, always wanting to solve a problem by blowing it up, and he also has the best lines. That sucks for your car. We better get out of here, the cops will be here soon. I really appreciated how we look at Johnny's relationship with Aisha, an ex-member of the Third Street Saints. Aisha left the Saints to sign a record deal with the Vice Kings, and Johnny never really forgave her. But over the course of the game, we see Johnny and Aisha get back together, which actually had a lot of heart. I cared about what happened to these characters. The biggest thing which doesn't work with the narrative, though, is due to our almost silent protagonist. I say almost because we do say a few lines at key moments. I'm gonna skullfuck that bitch. Hope you don't mind hepatitis. What? Having a silent protagonist is fine, because it allows us to put our own personality on our character, especially in a game with this much customization. The issue here isn't to do with the silent protagonist, it's to do with how it's used. We basically have long driving sections in the missions where a character tries to speak to us to fill out the silence. But because our character doesn't speak, we just sit there and don't reply. So Warren called me Aisha again today. Can you believe that? King is still blaming me for losing prom court. Volition does have other characters comment on the fact we don't speak, but that doesn't fix the problem. You're easy to talk to, you know that? I don't gotta worry about you interrupting me or any of that bullshit. Either have a character speak, or don't have other characters interact with us as much. This odd middle ground doesn't work. Overall though, the narrative is solid and does a great job of pushing us through the game. I was always excited to start the next mission, simply to see what happened in the story. It's a shame then, that the actual main missions aren't that good. I'm sitting here now recording this, and when I think back to the main missions, I can't remember many of them. There's a few that stand out across the game that show Volition are talented. There's a great mission where we take down one of the leaders of the Carnales gang by blowing up his plane before it leaves the runway, and there's another mission where we cause havoc across Stillwater by smashing into giant bowling pins and tearing down a famous statue. But other than that, I don't know. The problem is that the main mission objectives lack big set-piece moments and often blend in with the side content. We have a lot of turret sections, for example, just like we're playing the drug trafficking activity, and the combat missions are similar to the strongholds. Some of the combat missions are obviously longer and more grand in scale, but I wouldn't say they were any better. I know which of the two I enjoyed more. 
One reason for this is due to the small sandbox in Saints Row. We only really have cars to drive and the weapon list is pretty small. This means there are less options available for Volition to use when designing each mission. They can't have high speed chases on the waterfront for example, as there are no boats in the game, and they can't have objectives in the sky because there are no planes. And maybe that's not fair, because Saints Row is a smaller game with a smaller budget, but I still think Volition could have done more to repurpose mechanics already in the game, like swimming. There is swimming in Saints Row, with a really cool warp to shore mechanic, but it's never used in any of the missions. The missions that do have unique objectives unfortunately fall flat, and this is because they are almost a one-to-one -one copy of GTA. Seriously, look how many are similar. We have missions where we rescue someone from the other side of the map, a mission where we lure a rival gang to an ambush, a mission where we blow a hole in a prison wall with a car bomb, and a mission where we sniper enemies off a huge freighter. There are probably more I've missed, but this isn't even including the similarities with San Andreas. To be fair, this doesn't mean Volition copied Rockstar, as I know that it's possible for two people to create the same idea in any creative process. I actually experienced this firsthand when I was in my old band. I went into a recording studio to record one of our songs, and the producer asked us if we'd heard of another local band. We hadn't, but he showed us one of their songs anyway, and I'm not kidding, it was identical to ours. Even my drum parts were a one-to-one -one copy of the other band, and I'd never even heard of them. There is one big difference between my story and the story of Saints Row though, because Volition has heard of Rockstar. Sure, development of Saints Row started before San Andreas was released, but what about GTA 3 and Vice City? Why didn't Volition make sure their missions were different from what came before? Because as I said in my GTA 5 review, playing something for the second time is never as good as the first time we experience it. It's always going to be a lesser version. This is where Saints Row is at its worst, when it tries to emulate GTA. We have similar missions, similar mechanics, and attempts at similar humour which are not on the same level as Rockstar. The humour for one is much less witty satire and much more crude. At best, I was cringing at the jokes, and at worst, trying to figure out what the joke actually was. 15% off. This is disgusting me. You're robbing me. Did I take 15% off the genius that is Stefan? No. Did the clothes make you look 15% less than perfect? No, they don't. You'll come to impression the clothing shop and you will steal from me as I stand horrified. It's so frustrating because Saints Row is at its best when it carves its own path, when it creates its own identity and adds new mechanics. Volition said they wanted to advance the urban sandbox genre and they actually think they do an exceptional job here which is why the similarities with GTA are harder to take. First off, they've added loads of accessibility improvements, like being able to save the game from our menu as well as our safe house, or the fact we can restart a mission if we fail it. I cannot stress how important this is, as so much time is wasted in early GTA games because this feature isn't available. We always have to respawn at a hospital, hijack a car, and then drive back to the start of the mission. Well, that's not a problem in Saints Row. In fact, when we hijack cars, there's something new here too. If there's a passenger left in the car, we can take them hostage to earn money and respect. This is such a good idea, because it not only gives us another activity in the open world, but it creates a mini game for us to play as we move across the map. Oh, and you know how we can hold up stores in GTA? Well, now we can go into the back room and steal money from their safe. There's even a lockpicking mini game that's so good it would make Bethesda blush. Other mechanics we have seen before, like being able to recruit gang members and turf wars. They don't necessarily advance the genre in the same way, but I would say they make far more sense in Saints Row than in other games. They work here because the activities are combat heavy, often against large groups of enemies in the open world. The turf wars in particular become a pain in the final third of the game, as we always have to stop what we're doing and head to the area that's being attacked. So, a good way to speed them up is to enter the area with a car full of allies and let them do the work. What's great about this is the fact we can call up unique homies on our in-game phone. We simply call them up and they'll rush to our side and join our crew. It is sort of like an easy difficulty, as we always have an extra person on speed dial to help in battle. However, it never becomes too overpowered, as Volition program the homies to sometimes reject our calls, which leaves us to face the encounter alone. 
All of these mechanics are designed with freedom in mind. We're given tools in the game and we decide how to use them. This opens up so many gameplay options because of how the sandbox is designed. To show what I mean, I want to use this clip from a turf war in Chinatown. Here we have to take down a few lieutenants who are scattered across this open area. It's quite a large arena and it would take a while to run between each lieutenant. So in order to make this more manageable, I drove into the middle of the arena with Will and jumped on the roof of my car. From here, I took out the lieutenants at range, all while Will covered me if anyone got too close. This was one strategy, but other options are perfectly viable. We can load up a car with homies and let them shoot out the side, or we can run through the arena taking down each lieutenant at close range. It's completely up to us. This is how you design sandboxes. You create mechanics, link them together, and watch all of the organic moments that are created. And this happens all the time in Saints Row. The car explosions send tires flying into the air, which can then knock us over if we're not careful. A simple shootout can turn into a brawl as nearby gang members join the fight. Pedestrians can get a free taxi ride if you've got an open top car. And one time, I blew up an enemy's car, which sent the passengers flying out on fire, who then landed on my allies and set them on fire. Like, this is incredible. There are even objects we can interact with in the open world, including an actual football we can kick around the map. Like, what the hell? This is what sandbox games are about. Having an organic open world and giving us the tools to create our own fun. And Saints Row gets it absolutely right. Okay, before we move on to the open world, let's talk about the combat in Saints Row. The combat system is another area where Saints Row is trying to be different. Overall, it's more run and gun than other games in the genre. We don't have lock on aim as we simply sprint into battle and fire from the hip, and the focus is entirely on fun rather than skill. We see this instantly in the way that combat is designed. We have heavy aim assist and enemies have large hitboxes. This means we can fire near enough to the enemy and usually our shot will connect. We're also much more powerful than our enemies, often soaking up damage like we're playing a tank class in an MMO. I think all of these design choices are genius, because it means Volition can throw groups of enemies at us without it being frustrating. If we're fighting, say, five enemies at once, it's absolutely fine, because the combat system is designed to give us the upper hand. It actually reminds me of something like Diablo 3, where the entire game is designed to make us feel powerful. In both Saints Row and Diablo, the developers don't care about balance. Volition doesn't care if we're overpowered, if we can kill two enemies with one shotgun blast, or blow up a car with a well-placed grenade. They just want us to have fun. I'm gonna fuck you up! There was a real risk of this system turning stale, as we don't have any interesting abilities or new mechanics to build on the run and gun formula. It's not like we have a max pain bullet time or superpowers like we do in Control. Although superpowers wouldn't really work in Saints Row, right? However, this never happens because Volition constantly switch up the spaces we fight in. We have large open spaces which turn combat into an all-out brawl, and we also have tight interiors with cover to hide behind. And I mean, look how cool these arenas are. A supermarket, a huge mansion, a prison, the office of a skyscraper, and so much more. Now, there is one issue with combat, and that's to do with how ammo works. Ammo in Saints Row isn't global. It's based on the exact weapon we have equipped and the exact weapon only. As you can imagine, this means we burn through ammo incredibly quickly, simply because there's less chance of an enemy dropping the type of ammo we need. I was always running low on ammo, often not having enough ammo to actually beat an activity. I always had to stop everything I was doing to head to a friendly fire or to our crib just to restock, just like we do in GTA 3. To add insult to injury here, the ammo drought is a constant theme during the night when the shops are closed. I really like this idea, as it's realistic to have shops closed at night, but I just wish more thought went into how this mechanic would work with the rest of the game. Every time the shop shuts, Volition basically paused the game and forced us to wait until sunrise.
So, I've already talked about how Saints Row advances the GTA formula in certain areas, but there's one massive part of the game we've not discussed. Most of the advancements, in fact, are present in Saints Row's open world, the city of Stillwater. So, let's break that down now, step by step. At the highest level, Stillwater is split into different neighbourhoods, each with a different theme. We have standard urban areas, like the Saints Row District, home to low-cost apartments and the L train overhead, as well as more unique districts, each with interesting things to see. The high-end retail district, for example, has cobbled streets and boutique shops, whereas Chinatown has traditional Chinese pagodas and red banners lining the streets. Oh, there's a huge gong in Chinatown too, but unfortunately, it doesn't make a gong sound when we shoot it. The map size in Saints Row is also a nice balance between scale and density. It's large enough to get lost exploring, while being small enough to get around easily. We can basically drive across the map in 5 minutes, or if we want to speed things up, we can fast travel using one of the many train stations. The fact that Stillwater is small actually sells it short, as there is still an impressive sense of scale. We have huge landmarks like Ultor Dome that's visible on the horizon from miles away, as well as key features we'd find in any city. Huge skyscrapers downtown, massive highways that run through the city, and even a handful of bridges. One of the bridges even lifts up to let ships pass by, and if we're quick, we can drive our car over the top to get some serious air. Also fun fact, Ultor Dome is named after the evil Ultor Corporation, the main villains in the first Red Faction game. So, Saints Row does an excellent job in its surface level design, but how does it do in the smaller details? Well, it does very well actually. So well in fact, that I'm embarrassed to say I've praised modern games for features that Saints Row included in 2006. NPCs, for example, have realistic animations. They'll walk down the street and stop to tie their shoe, or they'll be slumped over if they're upset. I praised GTA 5 for this recently, but Saints Row did it in 2006. We also have elderly people in the game who walk arched over or with a Zimmer frame. The first time I saw this, an NPC was crossing the road. I then had to pick my jaw up off the floor as he started to jog when the signal turned red. And again, I recently praised Cyberpunk 2077 for this exact feature, yet Saints Row did it in 2006. I also said that Cyberpunk needed to fix its open world, because the water from fire hydrants phased through our car. I said that this wasn't acceptable, because GTA 4 had better physics in 2008. You can probably see where this is going, and I will be saying this a lot during this section, but Saints Row did this in 2006. What's great about all of this is that NPCs have their own schedule. We'll often cross paths with someone asleep on a park bench, or someone waiting for a bus. But instead of them waiting there, locked in place for an eternity, they stand up and go about their day. And this is the final time, I promise. But Cyberpunk only just implemented this feature, yet Saints Row was doing it in... I think you get the point. As well as Saints Row including features that other games adopted in the future, it also has features that I've never seen before. Like how the shops in Stillwater acts like real shops, often having sales in the game. And the best part about this is that the shop owners go on the radio to advertise the sale. Shirts, shorts, flags, the occasional strappy sandal. The radio is a fundamental part of urban sandbox games. We listen to the radio as we drive across the map. In Saints Row though, Volition takes everything to the next level by giving us an in-game MP3 player. Using the MP3 player, we can build our own playlist to listen to when we're exploring on foot. Oh, and by the way, Watch Dogs 2 also used this feature in 2016. The great thing about this though, is the fact we find collectible CDs in the open world, and for every 10 we find, we unlock a new song. Some of these are even songs that Aisha released in the Saints Row universe, original songs that Volition recorded to pad out the open world. This is outstanding world building, and something which GTA 4 and Cyberpunk also used. But yep, you've guessed it, Saints Row did it in 2006. If I am being picky, the open world can feel stilted at times. 
And I think this is due to budget constraints, or lack of resources, or a combination of both. It's most noticeable when going inside a building, as the interior spaces in Saints Row are rarely padded out. We have desks or bars with no NPCs behind them, and people just stand around like statues. You can see that the people in this bar are just standing there, occasionally raising their arm to take a drink, and that's it. It just makes certain areas feel like a ghost town or unfinished. The airport in particular is bad for this. It's this massive open space with nothing to fill it. There's a huge runway for example, but I never saw any planes landing or taking off. And there's a security hut that has nice detail, but then no one is inside it. This really is me nitpicking, and it doesn't change the overall quality of Stillwater, especially in a game from 2006. Stillwater is a great open world that added new features and mechanics to propel the genre forward. It's better than some modern games, and even includes features that were adopted many years later. I can't wait to see where Volition goes with Saints Row 2, but for now, let's finish off this review. Okay, let's answer that final question. Is Saints Row still great? Saints Row is one of my favourite games I've played in a while. The focus on fun across its side content, sandbox and combat makes sure that the gameplay never turns stale. The strongholds were a standout activity that were all unique and honestly put modern bandit camps to shame. And when all of this is combined with a solid narrative and an open world with interesting features, the answer is an easy one. Yes, Saints Row is still great. Even though Volition leans heavily on GTA, they do enough to add their own personality into the game. I just hope that Saints Row 2 expands on this so we can finally leave the GTA clone behind. Yeah.